From the Tribune News Network, this is News Break. I'm Krishna Russell. An increase of COVID-19 hospital admissions is overwhelming public sector nurses who are already strained by poor working conditions, Bahamas Nurses Union President Amancha Williams said yesterday. Data released by Ministry of Health officials yesterday said there were 95 new COVID-19 cases and 92 people in hospital. 79 patients are considered moderately ill and 13 are in the intensive care unit. The number of virus-related hospital admissions has grown over the past few days. On Monday, the number of virus cases in the hospital was 83. A day earlier, it was 81. Yesterday, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said an announcement was coming in response to the rise in cases. He said, quote, in the coming days, I will have more to say about our public health measures and vaccines in response to the increase in cases, mostly on New Providence. I once again implore everyone to abide by the public health measures. He made the comment to people gathered at a ribbon-cutting ceremony to mark the official opening of the Margaritaville Beach Resort and Finn's Water Park at the point. Princess Margaret Hospital has suspended all elective surgeries and only emergency cases are being allowed in response to an influx of COVID-19 cases in recent weeks. In a press statement yesterday, the public hospital's authority said the measures were implemented to manage PMH's already strained services as a result of the surge in virus cases. The statement said, quote, hospital administration at the Princess Margaret Hospital today announced the implementation of measures to manage the institution's already strained services as a result of a surge in COVID-19 cases cases presenting at the emergency department. The new measures are designed to reduce the spread of the virus among patients and staff. The Free National Movement has commissioned an internal poll that it says shows Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis leading progressive Liberal Party leader Philip Brave Davis in approval ratings. According to a memo obtained by the Tribune, Ragnar Research Partners conducted 400 interviews between July 1st and July 6th by live telephone operators and asked the respondents if they approve or disapprove of Dr. Minnis and Mr. Davis. According to poll results, 54% of Bahamians approve of Dr. Minnis, while while 37 percent disapprove of him, 24 percent of Bahamians approve of Mr. Davis, while 47 percent disapprove. The government intends to address the issue of too many derelict buildings in downtown Nassau through legislation and other legal means, Prime Minister Dr. Hubert Minnis said yesterday at the official opening of the Margarita Resort at the point. He said the issue must be addressed if Nassau is to meet its potential. There are too many derelict buildings in the city center, he said. They are eyesores. While some of the buildings can be refurbished, many have to be demolished. Dr. Minnis said once the issue is addressed through legislation, the government will seek to ensure that buildings in the city center are no longer abandoned and left to deteriorate, including government and commercial buildings. Your complete news and information source, this is the Tribune News Network. In international news, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says a committee investigating the January 6th Capitol insurrection will do the job it set out to do, despite Republicans' vow to boycott the probe. House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy said on Wednesday that Republicans won't participate after Pelosi rejected two of the Republicans he chose to sit on the panel, Representatives Jim Banks of Indiana and Jim Jordan of Ohio. Pelosi made clear today that she won't relent, telling reporters the two men took actions that made it ridiculous to put them on such a committee seeking the truth. Tokyo hit another six-month high in new COVID-19 cases today, one day before the Olympics begin, as worries grow of a worsening of infections during the Games. Today's 1,979 new cases are the highest since the 2044 recorded on January 15th. Tokyo's prime minister, who is determined to hold the Olympics, placed Tokyo under a state of emergency on July 12th, but daily cases have sharply increased since then. The emergency measures, which largely involve a ban on alcohol sales and shorter hours of restaurants and bars are to last until August 22nd after the Olympics end on August 8th. The Tribune's AccuWeather update a service of Bahamas Power and Light Company. A high-pressure ridge coupled with a plume of Saharan dust will continue to dominate the weather pattern across the country today. Boaters in the northwest Bahamas should remain vigilant for possible water spout activity, while beachgoers in the southeast Bahamas should continue to exercise caution due to the risk of rip currents at east coast beaches. Residents are still being urged to remain hydrated and limit outdoor activity due to high heat indices climbing into the 
triple digits. For all areas, it'll be mostly sunny, hot, and hazy, with a chance of a few isolated showers or thunderstorms, mainly across the extreme northwest Bahamas, and breezy conditions in the southeast Bahamas this afternoon, mostly fair and warm tonight. Small craft caution remains in effect for the southeast Bahamas. Small craft operators should also be alert for gusty winds and higher seas in or near heavy showers and thunderstorms. Winds southeast to south at 10 to 15 knots, but falling light and variable at times in the northwest Bahamas. East to southeast at 10 to 15 knots in the central Bahamas, and easterly at 15 to 20 knots over open waters in the southeast Bahamas. Seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean in the northwest and central Bahamas, and 4 to 7 feet over the ocean in the southeast Bahamas. We'll have a daytime high temperature of 92 degrees and an overnight low temperature of 77. Today's heat index is 108. The sun will set this afternoon at 758 and will rise tomorrow morning at 633. That's Newsbreak. Details of the day's top stories in the Tribune newspaper, now on the streets, or stay up to date online at tribune242.com.